So I decided that I needed to go in there and tweak some things in the killer video store. Now the video store has pretty good functionality. It's a shopping cart system that hooks into PayPal and then a, another payment gateway for credit card processing. It has built-in testimonials. It sends out reminders to users to rate the videos after a week. Blah, blah, blah. This has a star system. It's all built in. Now, this was built many years ago, and it uh, is PHP-based, and it is object-oriented, but no framework. It was just, you know, roll your out roll your own thing out because it was just it was not a super complex app that said it works it works fine does a lot so i was looking at it i was like you know this 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 testimonial thing is not working yet why is it why aren't we getting the hits what's going on why isn't it uh, registering so i'm going through things and this and that and the other thing as it turns out whatever it is x years ago i decided to basically re put aside my whole retail business with videos uh, for the most part and I was concentrated on my my um, institutional clients and other things outside of video sales I just lost interest and so I had shut off a couple of things little triggers so things weren't working I was like ah the code's broken what's what's not working and we had switched servers, I thought maybe it's server configurations, issues, and so forth. At the end of the day, it was just that I had basically turned off a switch on something. I won't get into the specifics. It's literally click and that's it. Everything was working again. It's that simple. The biggest problem with that code base is because it was non-standard. It was not based on any known MVC framework. That was number one, because if you build an app that's based on, let's say, PHP Laravel, or Java Spring, or Python Django, or Python Flask, anybody coming to it will go, oh, this is Flask, oh, this is Spring, oh, this is Laravel. I know where things are, where it's supposed to be, right? But when it's a custom job, even if, if it works, that's one of the downsides of a, of a custom job. It's non-standard, you know, you have to sniff around. So the next problem with the code base is that the, the guy who wrote it for me, he didn't comment it at all. So you have to really know it. You have to spend, you know, I spent about half an hour, an hour. Oh, okay, this is where this is, where this is. He should have put in a comment. He should have put some comments in there. <laughs> you know, he should have put in like a readme. This is how the app basically works. This, this, this live set of libraries, are calling this set of libraries, whatever. The naming conventions weren't clear. These are basic best practices in software development that really make the difference between easy to manage code and not so easy, easy to manage code. If the programmer, I'm not faulting him, we were just hacking this thing out quick, I guess. It's been years. If he would have taken that time, the extra 20 minutes to just document the code, put in a few key comments, a readme file that outlines this, this, this set of functions does this, this does that, when you want to set up a new product, this, that, this, how the testimony, just a little write-up like that. That would have gone a long way making my life easier. Comments, uh, readme files, uh, a nice simple breakdown of how your app code works is huge and again it goes back to a consistent theme in which i talk about in these vlogs the key to uh, success in your app development and your coding is to adhere to the basic principles the basic best practices self-referencing variables consistent obvious naming conventions good documentation are huge huge in fact in the open source world a lot of people say that they'll say the key between the successful open source projects and not so successful is really good documentation as developers as programmers we kind of discount that we kind of discount the uh, soft skills the communication skills the good writing we're much more concerned about you know learning node.js or or learning django or learning how to do react 
when oftentimes, if you're just really good at those basic best practices I just spoke about, you're going to be better than a sloppy Node.js guy. You're going to be better than a sloppy React guy. You know what I mean? So uh, keep that in mind. Ciao, ciao.